Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930, and in today's State of Gaming video, I wanted to address another big issue in gaming, loot crates. Loot crates have been appearing in almost every type of video game over the course of the past two years, and have hurt the industry as a whole. We've seen them in basically all of our favorite shooter games, and even in our single player action adventures. Some loot crates only grant players cosmetic changes, like clothing or decorations to customize characters with while others give players enhanced weapons, faster cars, or even more powerful AI companions. Some Loot Crate items in games have actual monetary value, encouraging even more players to spend money with the hopes of earning an item that they can sell back to the market. A vast majority of gamers agree that Loot Crates in games suck, so why do developers keep insisting on them? Well, the answer is simple, the cost of AAA gaming. According to an article on GamesRadar, the cost of AAA gaming has been increasing exponentially over the course of the past 20 years. Games back in the 90s could cost anywhere from 1 to 2 million to produce. However, similar games today can cost anywhere from 40 to 130 million. Video game production is significantly more expensive thanks to a larger staff, more advanced technology, and much more strict release date windows. Even with the huge increase in overall players, the initial revenue from a AAA game release isn't enough to produce a strong enough margin, and because of this, we're seeing studios shutting down left and right. So what's the answer to the increased production cost? Well, developers thought it would be downloadable content, locking away additional levels and items behind a paywall, forcing players to spend more on top of the game's initial price point in order to continue the story or enjoy more multiplayer. This practice was obviously not popular with gamers, and the concept has seen a drastic shift in the past few years that shows promise. Games like Rainbow Six Siege give players access to all the game's primary content like maps and characters, and instead only charge players for cosmetic changes that don't really affect the game in any way. But now, developers have sought out a new way to nickel and dime players, and this time it doesn't necessarily target all gamers, but more so those with addictive personalities, which is why loot crates are an even bigger problem than DLC. Loot crates are simply a gambling mechanic. You press the button and watch randomized items appear, all with varying levels of rarity and value. In some games, this rarity is meaningless, being as there's no way to cash out, and they're just unique cosmetics you can use to show off to your friends. But in other games, these items can actually influence the gameplay by increasing the player's strength or adding a faster card to that player's collection. Forza Motorsport 7, Shadow of War, and Star Wars Battlefront 2 are all guilty of encouraging players to buy loot crates in the hopes that it'll help improve progression. Some games take it a step further and have super rare items that can be sold online for a ridiculous amount of money. This is where the practice really gets bad. A majority of gamers aren't going to buy these loot crates. They simply don't care. So instead, developers aren't targeting them, but rather, they're targeting whales, or players with addictive personalities that will spend a lot of money. The practice is reminiscent of mobile games with microtransactions, where a handful of players will spend an unhealthy amount of money due to addictive personalities. The industry is taking advantage of these people simply to make ends meet, and because of this, legislators around the world are investigating the issue and looking for ways to ban loot crates altogether. So what can be done to fix this situation? Well, for one thing, developers need to stop making these loot crates pay to win. Randomized crates should never improve a player's gameplay experience, but instead should remain cosmetic. Cosmetic items are cheap and easy to develop, and players love to customize with them. The ability to sell these cosmetic items should be a banned practice. You should never be able to sell fake video game items and earn money from it. It encourages bad behavior in games that support this, like cheating, and players with a gambling problem will spend a large amount of money in the hopes of unlocking that one rare item they've been looking for. It's an unhealthy practice and simply shouldn't be encouraged by game developers. Or we could simply settle for less complex games. The AAA gaming franchise has become bloated and impossible to keep up with. Every other week, a new massive open world experience releases with hours upon hours of content to explore. But most of these experiences require a lot of senseless grinding and boring chores. Maybe games shouldn't be as complex as they are now and should have more focus. It'll help cut production costs down and perhaps sidestep the need for gimmicks like downloadable content or loot crates altogether. But what do you guys think? Do you want your game quality to be reduced, or would you prefer developers take advantage of loot crates as long as they're purely cosmetic? Let me know in the comments. And thank you guys for watching, I hope you found this video interesting, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more content posted every week.